Hi, this is Shelley Craft, and welcome to SNN Live. We're at the 25th Annual Roth Conference at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Laguna Beach, California. With me is Mr. David Weald of Weald & Company, a featured speaker. It's a private company, and he's a friend of mine. So welcome to SNN Live. Thanks for having me on, Shelley. How are you? You know, I, I have a million questions. Not a thousand, a million. But there's two things I want to cover. Right. Uh, the Jobs Act right. coverage, which you're speaking on at this conference, and then I will follow up with that with another question afterwards. So okay. tell me what you're speaking on, and let's talk about it. Well, we're you know, the, the Jobs Act was passed on April 5th, 2012. Uh, I was at the signing um, at the White House in the Rose Garden. Uh, it was based on our work, motivated by our work. So tomorrow we're really going to talk about what kind of comes next, and in particular, the uh, whole debate about decimalization and, and tick sizes. There was a round table at the SEC. I was a uh, participant in it on February 5th. Uh, there were three panels and the discussion is about you know, how did tick sizes, which are the smallest increments that stock tra stocks trade in, um, which are now a penny, how has that undermined the entire ecosystem to support small cap companies and thus the IPO market? So it was a terrific discussion and I think that where the SEC is going with it is that they're going to create a pilot program. I think the message to the small cap, uh, micro cap, nano cap uh, issuer community is you want to run and sign up to be a, a participant in this study as quickly as you can because literally without economic incentives to support your stocks um, the likelihood that we really improve small cap markets for entrepreneurs is very slim in my judgment. So let me say are you advocating a switch from decimals back to fractions? Uh, no, I mean, uh, most people kind of confuse fractions and decimals. I mean, fractions are, are thought, thought to be higher tick sizes, and in point of fact, they were once upon a time. But really, decimals is really how you count. It's, you know, one through ten. It's even numbers as opposed to fractions, which were quarter points, eighth points, uh, 30 seconds, teenies in the old days. Um, what we're talking about is getting back to where fractions were, but doing it through decimals by giving people the option to have their stocks traded instead of just penny increments in nickels, which is a uh, decimal, dimes, potentially 20 cent increments, okay, so to create some incentive for market makers to get back in there, provide capital to support institutional liquidity and research and also salesmanship. I mean, the problem with microcap stocks is that they trade asymmetrically, which means big buyer, no seller, big seller, no buyer. And somebody has to get paid to get out there and talk to the accounts to create an offsetting seller, an offsetting buyer. Right now, there's no money in that business, which is why liquidity has been decimated in small and microcap stocks, nano cap stocks. It's why we think that if we can change the incentive structure on Wall Street, that we will, we will bring Wall Street to invest large sums of money to bring resources that will support small cap stocks and by doing that a rising tide will lift all boats and it'll make for a much more fertile market to bring IPOs companies public in once again. So we think this is absolutely the most important thing that's going to come out of the Jobs Act. Actually, if you look at it, uh, Title I, which is the emerging growth uh, company sector, uh, which some say is the cornerstone of the Jobs Act, there was a, a uh, title, uh, 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 a clause in there, uh, 106B, which is entitled tick sizes, which caused the SEC to report to Congress on the impact of decimalization on capital formation. They did that in July. They said that it requires more study. Probably the only viable way to really study it in detail is to run a pilot where we have lots of stocks that are trading in nickels and dimes and we compare them to a sample set of stocks that are still trading in pennies to see how liquidity is impacted. And, and so, again, every public company should be banging on the doors of the Securities and Exchange Commission saying, if you do a study, when you do a study, we want to participate. It's, it's great news, great news for the small micro cap and nano cap community. So this is the return of the trading spread. 
That's essentially what it is. You know, in trading economics, we get at it to a little bit differently. The old days, what we did was it was quoted, it was sort of over the counter, uh, and, and but what we're doing now is electronically, we're saying, okay, you can't crash spreads from a quarter point down to a penny. You got to put something in there to create some in incentive, and that will vary. I mean, we're we're actually a proponent of uh, of issuer choice, meaning that create a list of options, no more one size fits all stock market structure at a penny. Uh, give them nickels, dimes, give them 20 cents increments, let the issuer management uh, after consultation with their investment bankers, with their institutional investors decide are they a stock that, does, that should trade with a, a nickel, with a dime, with a two cent increment, whatever the number is, and we'll create a limited set of options, but those options will allow management teams to optimize their market structure for their size, their industry, their natural level of liquidity or lack of liquidity as the case might be. They can promote liquidity by increasing the size of the carrot uh, in the marketplace. So now you're going back to the same commission that regulated spreads out and telling them to save the IPO market, you have to put them back in. Well, my, my, that's what we're doing, but my personal feeling is, uh, Shelley, that these were unintended consequences, that they really didn't understand the long-term implications. And in fact, Arthur Levitt recently uh, on uh, Bloomberg uh, surveillance uh, said that the order handling rules, which came out during his watch, uh, had some massive unintended consequences, and he attributed uh, the night securities debacle, Facebook, some of the other things that were undermining investor confidence to some of these rule changes. So I think that there's increasing recognition uh, that it wasn't um, as helpful as it was intended to be. I think people were well intended, but there were things that they missed. And the fascinating thing to me is we're going to do a pilot to test increasing tick sizes, but if you go back through the record, what I discovered was that the major rule changes that we think caused the problem, which were the order handling rules in 1997 and then Reg ATS, which was the birth of really broad electronic markets, ATS stands for alternative trading systems, that that caused, uh, that was done without a pilot. They just did it, right, across the entire market. So really what we have today, which I think is, is, is really um, misinformed, is we have a one-size-fits-all stock market, and large capitalization stocks trade dramatically differently because they're naturally liquid. And so applying a market structure that makes those stocks, which is small tick sizes, to small cap stocks actually makes them, it backfires, it makes them, makes illiquid stocks more illiquid. And that right there is the rub, that is the problem. And I, I think that we're starting to really understand the the problem I think as a consequence you know you shine light on something then it puts regulators and and policymakers it, it, it gives them an opportunity to create some consensus to go fix the problem and we're now in the early throes of the problem fixing phase of stock market so I think that you go out five years from now I'm cautiously optimistic that we will be in a much better environment for small public companies, for companies to go public, and I think that is a great thing for the entrepreneur. Website. You website. Are, you, <laughs> I'm sorry, your website. Well, I mean, first of all, I... Don't give me I, the commission's all website. All the thought leadership that we've done has been through the, the great, gracious support of Grant Thornton. I think you know that. All of our studies are published. Uh, uh, the most recent one, uh, which, I, which I, is really a tome, it's, a, it's one of my venture capitalist friends calls it a magnus opus, uh, is uh, called The Trouble with Small Tick Sizes. And so I'd urge your readers to go out and get that. You can find, find it, Google it on the internet. Internet. Um, we uh, we do. Uh, you can find that at gt.com uh, also, which is Grant Thornton's web address. And of course, you know we run an investment bank. It's wieldco.com, W-E-I-L-D-C-O.com, and uh, we're issuer uh, aligned in every manner, shape, form of the word. All we do is try and improve outcomes for our uh, issuer client base. Ladies and gentlemen, David Wield. Wield and Company, featured speaker at the Roth Conference, and he's got a private company. Go check it out. Website one more time. Uh, Wieldco.com, W-E-I-L-D-C-O.com. I almost got you there. Yeah. I'm Shelley Kraft. This is SNN Live. We're at the 25th.
25th Annual Roth Conference at the Ritz-Carlton in Laguna Beach, California. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Shelley. Good to see you again. Yeah.